Every head must bow, every tongue must confess that those dudes let's I told baby the other day on the phone, I said, baby, one day I hope it be hundred years, two hundred years from now, I hope you live forever or whatever. But I said one day they gonna have if they don't do it now, they gonna have statues with you and your brother and they gonna have you smiling. I hope they put diamonds the I know it's gonna be kinda hard. They're gonna, they gonna have to shield it where nobody can't take the diamonds out or whatever. But they need to have his mouth showing with all his diamonds or whatever. Yeah, of course. Cause that's what he wanted you to know or whatever. And so like he wanted you to see that bling and he was gonna put it in their face and let them know we I rock ice. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. So, since we've been talking about cash money so much, I want to know why is it that Birdman wants you to be the NR for Cash Money Southern Region? Well, I think because he's been watching me and he's been listening to me talk on shows like y'all and seeing me talk on my Instagram page and just doing my due diligence, working hard and knowing, like he said, he, he kind of got on me too because Youngin, you know, I was working with Youngin, he said Youngin, you know, BTY Youngin spoke highly of me, so him figuring out who the face was he probably heard of me from young but he didn't know who i was till he said oh that's the dude with gdp that's the one he was talking about um so he see my knowledge and stuff like that and then he's seeing i'm curating things on my instagram page posting videos that he like i probably be like oh damn this music sound good he probably seemed like he more in tune with what's going on because he really right on the ground with it or whatever so i think it was that and just seeing that I'm a student of the game, I think him and his brother are really smart enough to really know when somebody else got some special in him. And I think that's what he see too, because I feel like he ain't been wrong over the years on the talent and the people that he didn't thought was dope. They was right. right he was right. right a lot of times, you know. How he, long ago did he reach out? Uh, when he first reached out to me, that was like around Valentine's Day, I want to say, mm. I think. Um, and, you know, we've been rocking ever since. I went up there to Miami, J Merck, YD, and a lot of us, um, my partner, OBG Bang. Uh, G Jerk, a lot of us had went up there to Miami, and um, we went to Hit, Fa Hit Factory, and you know we recorded some songs, and he gave us some game, and you know, um, and it was a nice experience. I had never been to Miami and stuff That's like dope. this. So, really? No, nah, I never had been to Miami. That was the How'd you like it? I, man, I loved it. I was like, God damn, the women beautiful. <laughs> you uh, in the, the South Beach? You in South Beach? Yeah, the women. Both on South Beach. Cause you know the houses, like you know, it was just the whole thing, like you know, and just being there. For that, it was it was a beautiful experience, whatever. Like I said, I just like the whole vibe of Miami. Like, you know, you could see all the, the Jamaican influence, the, the Haitian influence, just the Caribbeans. It felt like Caribbeans in, even though I never been there, but it just gave me that with all the different mixtures of people. Like, it was like gumbo. Miami's a big melting yeah, pot. Yeah, it's like a big melting pot. It's just in America, you know? So I, Bro, I feel like that's be, probably how it would be. You I'm, should be proud, man. Like I said, uh, people get excited when they hear, you know, about different things going on in the east and the west coast, but in the south, man, when you when it come down to Birdman and Slim and just cash money and the moves they done made, mm -hmm. ain't nobody really, you talk about disruptive, about 50, these dudes, man, these dudes, these dudes changed the game, bro. That was disruptive. Like the way Juvenile came with that high song, that was disruptive. That the way was he was crazy. rapping. That's you with that big body being, huh? That's you that can't keep old lady because you keep yelling the friends, huh? You gotta go to court, huh? The way he was rapping on um, back to that stuff. Cash money records taking over for the nine nine in the two thousand. Yo, you working with some bad jazz? Just bad jazz. You working with some ass jazz? Your bad jazz make a nigga spend his cash jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk like that or whatever. That's disruptive because they people are like, what the hell is he doing? Like, how is he writing like that? But that's how we talk when we talk. Juvenile like to call it the off the porch flow. So that's kind of how he rap. Like he rapped from the project steps. Then you got. Like I said, Cash Money just doing what they're doing with the diamonds in their mouth, stunning, doing donuts, the cars, leaving the car, leaving the, leaving the helicopter. the helicopters coming on the stage, the helicopter, everything that they was doing, the deal was um, disruptive. Everything that they did was disruptive, but like Baby said, he wanted them to respect us. And that's why P was the same way too. We going to P like when they thinking, oh, he dumb, he was smart enough to know I got to go pay a lawyer to give me the knowledge and information that I need so I could get the deal no I want. Soldier. Nobody wasn't trying to think like that or whatever, but these dudes from New Orleans, even when you like you said, go back to Tyler Ty, Ty, Ty Perry. He was smart enough to know how he won his deal. Now he worked over $2 billion. This is all coming from where I'm from. That's you know? hard. So that lets you know the type of mindset that people have from here and what is breeding. So this is a part of our culture. And um, like I said, that's very disruptive. That was disruptive what they did in hip hop. And that's why they don't want to let shit like that happen again. But you got P from Quality Control, the CEO. He don't. 
he he probably got a lot of respect for Jermaine Dupree, and I love Jermaine Dupree, but he always give more credit to Baby and P. That's who we look up to because he identified more with them because they from the streets, I guess. So he could resonate with them more than a Ellie Reed, uh, Jermaine Dupree, and that's a lot of dudes from Nipsey was like that, Cam and them, uh, Dolph, Yo Gotti. I mean, I could go on and on or whatever. Turkey Mel, even the CEOs from Bad Rouge that was doing business with Pimp C. Yeah, all them dudes looked up to Baby and Slim and Master P or whatever. So like I said. Every head must bow, every tongue must confess that those dudes let's I told baby the other day on the phone, I said, baby, one day I hope it be hundred years, two hundred years from now, I hope you live forever or whatever. But I said one day they gonna have, if they don't do it now, they gonna have statues with you and your brother and they gonna have you smiling. I hope they put diamonds in. I know they're kinda hope they're gonna, they're gonna have to shield it where nobody can't take the diamonds out or whatever, but they need to have his mouth showing with all his diamonds or whatever. Yeah, of course. Cause that's what he wanted you to know or whatever. And she's like he wanted you to see that bling and he was gonna put it in their face and let them know we I rock ice. Man, shout out! But, I got to shout Slim out for that book. What is it, Secret Minds of a Millionaire mm -hmm. by T. Hall Becker? It was a book that he was reading. Right. And you don't get much from Slim. Right. Sugar Slim, that, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. But but Slim was was reading that book, and he he let it slip out that he was on the airplane reading that book. And I went and got that book, man. That book helped us so much, man, in finances. Right. Uh, that just because I pay attention to it. Right. I'm gonna get that book. Yeah, that Secret yeah. Minds of a Millionaire. It's a really, it's really yeah. good book, okay, man. Okay. And uh, I got that from Slim because yeah. he don't talk much, but I, I got that from him. I just ordered a book too. Whatever. It's, it's, it's an old music executive, but I just be trying to see because they always try to make like the black music executive so bad. But I'm getting a book on Morris Levy. Okay. They call it the, the Godfather of the Music Business. You know, he was still doing a lot of shit with the mob and doing a lot of bad shit, and this a white guy but they'll just try to make like all the black executives so bad but they've been doing it Linda Chess all them guys all stuff. so I want to read the book I know about them but I just be want to read so I be getting a lot of books on Amazon that's one I got coming in now too I yeah, got a question so back to the the NR part of it mm -hmm. um, you step into that position mm -hmm. um, what is it that you would bring to the table that nobody else would well I mean like I say I feel like I got a good ear for talent I feel like I know how to nourish talent if they, if there's talent there. I feel like I could work with it and stuff like that. I did it before when I was doing the stuff with my cousin at Zero Six. I, I work with the artists that he has. So I feel like if they got some type of talent, I could work with them. But I feel like my eyes out there because I'm on the thing blogging and I got a lot of other friends and good people that got great taste in music that be like, look, I see this, I see that. Just like Puff said, a lot of times he might pick all of a lot of times his girlfriend might have said at the time, mm -hmm. Misha might say this hot or this the nice clothes to wear. So those people help out too. So it's a lot of good people that I feel like I got around me too, but I feel like I got an eye and an ear for it. And I feel like he just realized that I do too or whatever. I just need the, the, the opportunity to be able to showcase that or whatever. A lot of times people just need a chance. You know, you got like Jay Prince always say, you got a choice and a chance every day. You know, choose wisely. So I feel like I can make the right choices to, to to benefit you know the whole team or whatever what's your goal in life my goal in life is to be big with music um i want to be able to help a lot of people and put more people in position when i get on i want to try to make other people entrepreneurs and help shine light on other people because i feel like we shine together like big meets always say you know we shine shine like new money mm -hmm. and we shining together everybody could be bosses everybody could pull each other up and like jay-z said before you know no one would ever fall because everybody be each other's crutches so if we really kind of hold one another down or whatever, then that could kind of help more of the people. I feel like a lot of times people get the ball and run off with it and don't share it. So I really would want to share and help people, you know. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.